Nardo County Sheriff's Office Community Watch for May 2019. I'm out here uh, and behind me is the jail which is still coming along. Hopefully they'll be finished later in, in the summer. Uh, but we want to talk about uh, some things today with the Sheriff's Office. Uh, uh, Sheriff Darren Cam wants to talk about the most wanted uh, for May. With your help, we've been able to give a lot of tips back to the Sheriff's Office. So thank you all for your help out there. Also, want to talk about the Citizens Academy, which is forthcoming. Also, a little bit about some of the efforts that the Sher Arlo County Sheriff's Office does down at Lake Norman. They, they have an extensive program of support uh, on, on the lake and talking about boating safety and safety and things like that. And also, things to, to look out for later in the year. So let's go to to Mike Furman and Sheriff Darren Campbell talk about the most wanted in the Citizens Academy and more here at the Iredell County Sheriff's thanks, Office. Thanks Brian. Welcome to the May edition of Community Watch with Sheriff Darren Campbell. Sheriff, thanks for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me. Um, we've got a good following to the show and I think we've got a, a few important things to talk about today so let's just get right into it. Let's start with the most wanted. for The hey. most wanted from this week. Okay. Well, our first one you'll see some of these are some that we pull out that we're really needing to help locate. The public has been great in helping us locate these individuals. So I'll run through them real brief. Our first one is Linda Marie Dalton. She's 41 years old of 144 Shotgun Lane, which is in Statesville, North Carolina. She is one for felony possession with intent to sell and deliver uh, and felony sale of methamphetamine. She has a, a, a minor history, but we're looking forward for the drug sales. Uh, our second person is Melissa Lynn Kohler. She's 36 years old of 181 Carlisle Road, which is down in Troutman, and felony obtaining property by false pretense. That's what we're seeking her for. Our third person is William Austin Blankenship. He's 23 years old of 3 Linker Lane, which is in Stony Point. Uh, felony possession, intent to sell and deliver methamphetamine. He has a, a history of a lot of uh, possession, intent to sell and deliver counterfeit controlled substances and possession of marijuana, and felony possession, intent to sell and deliver a Schedule 2. That's some of his past charges. Jason Bradley Blevins is our next one. He's 38 years old of 9791 Era Street, which is in Hickory, North Carolina. Uh, felony possession, tent to sell and deliver methamphetamine, and felony sale and deliver methamphetamine. Our final one this week is Robert Weston Fisher. He's 38 years old of 648 Cooter Hollow Road in North Wilkesboro. Felony possession with intent to sell and deliver methamphetamine. No, obviously uh, a lot of drug charges in there. You also had uh, numerous uh, suspects in your spring sweep roundup that you uh, did last week. A lot of uh, drug offenses in those charges as well. Um, seems to be a priority or, or is it like shooting fish in a barrel? Their drugs are so rampant it's hard not to come across these people. Well, you know, you've always heard me say I want to be proactive versus reactive. And one of the messages you've seen here, two of those individuals were from out of county. Mm -hmm. And I don't want them to come over here thinking they're going to be able to come over here and peddle their drugs and sell. So we want to make sure we set an example. And they know that we're, we're going to get them if they're selling to undercover officers. And, you know, you're talking about the drugs. It's, it's the crime that the drugs breed. Mm -hmm. There's so much other crime, the assaults, your larcenies, your break-ins are tied to the drug nexus mm -hmm. or tried, tied to the drug dealers and the guy that's selling the drugs. So... One thing we do with these roundups, we want to make sure, you know, in the in the drug world, that they're just like us. They, they have to have a trust. But if we can keep doing these roundups, not only does it drive our crime rates down, but it also builds up a mistrust in their in their world, mm -hmm. meaning they don't know who to deal with because mm -hmm. they know we are going to do these roundups. Right. So you know what happens? They go to somewhere else to do it, mm -hmm. and they leave here. So with that being said, we can tell by our crime numbers and our crime rates that, that are steadily falling that this is definitely having an impact. Mm -hmm. And some people will say, well, you know, we're just we're just arresting the addicts and stuff like that. That's absolutely not what we're doing. If you have a problem, and I'll send this message out, if you have a problem, a drug problem, come to us, we'll help you get the resources. But now selling drugs to an undercover officer is not the way to get help. Good point, good point. So, uh, uh, changing gears a little bit, let's talk a little bit about the Sheriff's Athletic League. I know that uh, you're heavily involved in sponsoring youth sports. Tell us a little bit about uh, the department's role in that, how deputies are involved, and, and, and what you see is uh, the return on that investment. Are you? you know, it's summertime. So our volleyball league is going on, or springtime. Our volleyball league has started this year. We, we're still up to a huge amount. I'm going to say it's going to be close to last year or even over, which is about 260-some girls, maybe even a little bit more. We have two different leagues. We have a JV and our varsity. We'll have a championship at the end. And one thing this year is... Uh, one thing this year is we're going to extend the age up to 16. Mm -hmm. 
So that'd be good. So now a lot of the girls that was fixing age out at 15, we've had a lot of parents come forward and want us to up the age. Mm -hmm. So are deputies involved in that, helping coach or uh, at the games or anything along those lines? They, they go to the games. They come out and support the teams. Uh, we do have some coaches. The sheriff's office, like I said, Jason Lawrence is one of our detectives. And Stephanie Austin, who's mm -hmm. here at the office, along with other deputies, supported. They uh, ordered the jerseys. They set the schedule. They set up the practice. And that's one of the important things with us, with our, our Ebenezer gym and our new Monticello facility, mm -hmm. is we're able to keep those gyms and uh, mm -hmm. just have a good, good relationship with these young ladies. Okay, great, great. Um, let's talk about the Citizens Academy. You've got uh, two-week Citizens Academy coming up in May. and. Uh, people who are interested can sign up and tell us a little bit about the program. The program Citizens Academy is it, it's usually what you hear. This year we want to make it a little bit. We always try to add and have good things happen. But it'll start on the 7th and it'll run through, I believe, the 23rd. And it'll be Tuesdays and Thursdays. And if anybody's interested, please get the word to us. They can contact us at Idle County Sheriff or IdleSheriff.com or through Facebook at Idle County Sheriff. Uh, we're almost to capacity mm -hmm. and uh, so we've had a great turnout. We just posted last week and we've almost got it. But there'll be a lot of stuff. We have some with the Lake Patrol Division, our criminal investigations, our SWAT team, our K-9 unit. So it'll be fun. Okay. Now the weather's warming up. Uh, people are out and about. Uh, Going to be more lake traffic. Uh, tell us a little bit about the Sheriff's Office's role in keeping people safe on the water. You know the lake is, the population is just grows every year. Uh, we obviously have a presence out there pretty much all the time during the day. And it's got to be where it's almost during the whole year. Mm -hmm. But come summertime, we've got a lot of boats. You have a lot of swimmers, skiers. There's a lot of different activities going on. Uh, we've really seen an increase with people coming down to the lake to do drone footage and to watch stuff. But mm -hmm. the problem that causes is is if you used to hit a boat or get low, it just, it can, we, we seen a problem with that last year, but just use caution with that. And otherwise, just make sure you have your flotation devices, you're, you're, you're not drinking and operating a boat, your people understands they can swim, things like that. Okay. Well, thanks, Sheriff. We appreciate your time, and we look forward to getting back with you next month. Hey, thanks for having me. Thank you.